I'd rather have Jesus. When you find your place, please stand. Number 491. Turn over a few pages to number 479, 479, I am resolved. <clears throat> we'll sing four verses. Before fellowship, 
I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter. Let's have some fellowship and greet each other tonight. Number five, number five. I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit, we'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free.
you so much. Please be seated. Uh, would our ushers please come forward? Well, good evening. Good to have you all with us tonight. Uh, welcome back, Crossroads Baptist Church. Great to have you with us. As far as announcements, I don't think there's anything necessarily uh, pressing. We do have on March 11th a co ed young adult volleyball in the gym. Uh, we'll be doing this on uh, March 18th and 25th as well. Uh, on March 16th, we have a church work day that will involve cleaning the gym and church vans. You can see my brother Luke uh, for details on that. March 22nd, 6 p.m., we'll have a young adult and teen bowling outing at J&J &J Lanes. Uh, bring money to bowl and $5 for pizza. There's a bulletin board uh, for signing up in the hallway to your left. For that, uh, April 5th at 6 p.m., we'll have our uh, annual Panthers Athletic Banquet. Uh, there's a, a sign-up sheet for that as well if you're planning on going. Uh, there'll be food, uh, awards given out for those who participate in our homeschool sports and fellowship of like nature. Uh, thank you again for being here uh, this evening. And Ethan, would you please uh, bless our offering? Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every individual that has come to your house tonight, Lord, to learn more about you. Thank you for uh, this church, and I thank you for its doors being open and uh, the light it is on the hill here, Lord, providing uh, access to your word to the community around it, Lord. Pray for this offering. I thank you for uh, the gift and the giver, Lord, and I pray that you would use it for your work. All this I pray. Amen. Brother Jeffrey Lynn, you can make your way forward. Uh, Brother Lynn will be bringing the message for us tonight. Uh, Brother, thank you for being uh, willing and able to preach a word tonight. Right. Good to be here tonight. Glad you're here as well. Be here by myself, it wouldn't be much purpose. So thank you for being at church on a midweek service, prayer service. It's one of the most important things in our Christian life, and most people would admit to it, but then... Most people also won't show up for it, so glad you're here. I'm looking forward to prayer together later. Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12 to be our starting point this evening. Hebrews chapter 12. We'll read a couple of verses and then we'll pray. Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse number 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for 
the opportunity to come together free from fear, free from persecution, to study your word together. Lord, help us, Lord, to be benefited by it tonight. Lord, help us in our time of prayer tonight to uh, reach your throne with the requests that we have. Lord, help them to be requests that you desire to answer. And Lord, pray please be with the children in the other building as they're learning your word and, and learning about you together. Lord, I pray you please bless them and their efforts. And Lord, just help us tonight to get closer to you. Lord, we love you in Jesus and we pray. Amen. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a simple topic here. We're not going to be going through a certain passage or anything like that. We'll be jumping around in our Bibles quite a bit. Um, but I want to talk to you tonight about fixing our focus on the Lord. Um, it's one of those things that it's very easy to just say, oh, yes, we should do that. Um, but so often this world and, and the way our culture is, the way our lives are, it's very easy to get distracted, uh, very easy to get sidetracked. If you're anything like me, you're distracted easily um, by I mean, uh, anything. It could be something shiny and you're just, you're just totally off. And my son's that way. And I got to say his name about 52 times, it seems sometimes, because he'll start doing something and then it just wander the other direction and buddy what's what happened oh I don't know <laughs> it's like just focus man just focus for two seconds I need your focus and and I feel like that's the way we are with the Lord sometimes the Lord's just like church member you know just just focus for five minutes just give me your focus and and we can do something together but so often we're just kind of wandering all over the place seems sometimes because we're just just not focus. And uh, we want to be able to focus on the Lord. Having the correct focus in our lives, it changes things. Sometimes people get too focused on the job or too focused on the education or even a relationship, some on politics. Sadly, a lot of people tend to focus on that which makes them afraid or doubting. And they tend to dwell on those things. But as Christians, we know our primary focus should be the Lord, should be the word of God, should be the fellowship of the brethren, should be those things. We know that in our heads, but it's so hard sometimes not to allow our focus to split, our attention to split. We can, you may be a master at multitasking, but in church, when you're supposed to be singing a hymn or in church, when you're supposed to be listening to the preaching, that's not the time to showcase your ability to multitask. Um, there are those that we, there, we got gentlemen up in the sound booth tonight. I used to work in a sound booth. My dad worked in a sound booth and, and they were always elevated ones. And the blessing of that and the curse of that was you were up above and behind people. So you got a firsthand look at how many people were watching and listening and paying attention and how many people were playing video games on their phone. And sadly, there were always at least some of those or how many people were sleeping or whatever. You just got that, that bird's eye view from the back. And no, you're, you're sitting there with you like, oh, nobody can see what I'm doing. And that brother up there is like, I can. <laughs> but, uh, I'm kidding. He's not spying on you, I'm sure. But, but he could if you wanted to. And God sees, right? We just got to go back to that. So um, we might be able to do a lot of things at one time. And, and you may be great at that. Uh, parents, you, you have to be good at that because that's just life is multitasking. And so often we get good at that and we kind of mistakenly apply that into our spiritual life. And we really shouldn't. When, we, when we're praying to God, we should be focused on that and that alone. When we, are, when we are doing our devotions to the best of our ability, we should be focused on that and that alone. We're in church and we're fellowshipping. We should be focused on what's happening around us, not on, you know, what's in the oven at home. Uh, we ought to have our focus correct and right. Our eyes may be focused on one thing and our mind on another and our ears on another. But when we split our attention, we lose the ability to truly retain what we need to and, and have the focus that we ought to have. Turn with me in, in your Bible to 2 Kings chapter number 6. 2 Kings chapter number 6, um, I believe we read this story together uh, even last Sunday, but uh, hard for me to keep track. So 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse number 8. First thing I want to consider the benefits of proper focus. We're going to look at three things. We're going to look at your eyes and your ears and your mind. Your eyes, your ears, and your mind. And tonight we'll start with the eyes. For, uh, 2 Kings chapter number 6. Well... I told you 2 Kings, and I went to 1 Kings, 2 Kings chapter number 6 and verse number 8. Relatively familiar story in the Bible. The Bible says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God had warned him, uh, told him and warned him of, and saved himself there. 
once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. That, that's, that's a pretty good advantage in, in war. You don't even need to insert a spy into the enemy camp. You just got God telling you what he's talking about. You got the man of God warning you, don't go down that road because there's an ambush. That's a pretty incredible situation in the word of God. What's the response of the enemy king? Verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Now, it would, it would be a reasonable uh, concern for this young man. He knows that God has told his master, the prophet, about the, the attacks coming on the king, and he saved him. But now all of a sudden he wakes up and they're surrounded. It's like, wait a second, Lord, you forgot one. Us, you know, you didn't warn us. Like we're we're surrounded now. Verse sixteen, and he answered, fear, "Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them." And Elisha prayed and said, "Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see." And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and saw and behold, the mountain of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now, it's an incredible story in the Word of God, and it just is a reminder to see, uh, for lack of a better term, to see with spiritual eyes, to not just look at the physical, not just look at what we can see and understand, but to know that there's a spiritual warfare that's going on around us in this world, and to know that there is a spiritual meaning behind the things that are happening in our lives, and there's a spiritual aspect to all these things. And so this young man, this this servant of the man of God, he looked out and he saw the enemy. And it's very easy today to look around and see the enemy. There's enemies without, there's enemies within, there's enemies that cause us trouble, there's enemies that we assume will cause us troubles, and we just constantly fed this diet of fear and anxiety because there's so much anti-God in our culture. There's so much anti-Christ and anti-church and anti-Christian, it's easy to get focused our eyes on the enemy. And, uh, and so here, the, this young man, he gets the spiritual vision given to him to be able to see that there are more with us than there are with them. Uh, the enemy likes to make us think that we're alone in this fight. The enemy likes to make us think that we're isolated. And I tell you what, we used to always, we'd take our kids to, our teenagers to youth groups and things just to show them there are other people out there, even young people, that want to serve God, that want to live by the Bible, that want to have some standard of holiness in their life. You're not alone. You may be the only one in your public school, but you're not the only one, period. And so when we get spiritualized, it helps us to look past uh, the, the onslaught of the enemy. Uh, my pastor, when he was my youth pastor, when I was in the youth group, um, I was a public school kid. And uh, he at one time challenged us as teenagers to visualize, and I know this is intense, but it's what he said, visualize our lost friends in school on fire. I was like, really? That's, that's intense. He said, yeah, visualize them on fire because if, if they're not reached with the gospel, that's what's going to happen. I said, man, that's brutal. Like, that, is, that is some guilt tripping on next level there. But I did it, and, and I'll tell you what, and I still to this day, every now and then, I'll just look out at a crowd and just imagine how many of these people know Christ and how many don't. And then when you think about how many don't and you picture them in, in hell and in the lake of fire, it just it really does. It convicts you. It makes you just want to stand up and just publicly start preaching Christ because there's so many people that are lost and dying and on their way to hell, but we don't see them. Because what we see is a rude waitress, or what we see is a guy that cut us off, or what we see is a grocery bagger that's not bagging the groceries the right way. I mean, who puts the bread and the two liter together? We should know better than that. But we don't see it spiritually, right? It's so, it's so easy to lose the spiritual focus and to just see things as they are without the spiritual mindset. So if we get our minds on the spiritual, it helps us in many ways. First of all, it helps us with uh, thankfulness. If we train ourselves to acknowledge and, and see all the blessings in our life as gifts from God and thank him for them, we'll be better for it. If we give credit to karma or luck or chance, we're robbing glory from God. 
If we train our eyes to see the truth of James 1.17, we'll, we'll do a lot better. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Anything good that happens in our life, if we just give credit to the Lord for it, it helps us to stay in that, that aspect of seeing things in a spiritual mindset. Not just, well, I, I see what happened and I just credit it to good luck. No, if you see it and you credit it to God, where the credit is due and praise him for it, that will help you in your Christian walk. Uh, it helps us in boldness. The passage in 2 Kings chapter 6, the young man only saw the enemy army. His focus was on the enemy, and it caused him to fear and to ask, what shall we do? But when God opens the eyes to see the power of God surrounding those enemy soldiers, what a change that must have brought to that young man. It's like, man, you go from what shall we do? You know, we're surrounded to all of a sudden seeing these chariots of fire surrounding the enemy, and it's like, man, I guess we're okay. <laughs> I guess it's not going to be that bad. Um, I don't know about you. I, there's been some times when I've kind of watched something developing, and you just you're just waiting for the for the the hammer to fall. You're just waiting for the the big event to happen. And you're like, man, or or even just simple as this: driving down the highway and you see somebody doing something. You're like, oh boy, I'm about to see an accident, and and then it just doesn't happen. Like, huh? Okay, I guess that's. I guess we're not going to have a big tragedy today. And sometimes I think that's how we feel in our Christian life: is we're looking so much at the enemy, we're looking so much at the circumstances, and we're not looking up enough. And then when God does bless us, it's like, whoa, whoa, that was kind of nice. That was unexpected, and and we just chalk it up to chance. That's not what we should do, though. In uh, in John chapter sixteen, verse thirty-three, we have the reminder: uh, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer; I have overcome the world. And so, if we keep our sight on the Lord, it'll help us in our witnessing. If we have spiritual eyes, if we have spiritual eyes, it'll help us in our boldness. Uh, and if we have spiritual eyes. Um, it will just bless, it'll help us to give God the credit the way that He deserves. It's it's easy to see all the bad, but if we'll just focus on the Word of God and see things the way, uh, kind of through the lens of God's eyes and God's perspective, it really helps. I know in my life it really helps me to not fear and to have courage and to not be discouraged because. When we look through our own intellect and our own sight and our own physical observance, it's so easy to, to get discouraged sometimes. But then we just flip the script and say, okay, how big is this issue to God? I mean, Jesus Christ has overcome the world. He's been tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. He, he's creator of all things. And I'm worried about this. Sometimes that just, it helps. It really does. Helps us to change that focus of our eyesight. Uh, when we focus on the enemy surrounding us, one thing that you got to do is just remember, hey, every lost person out there, it's not just, you know, yes, I understand according to the word of God, they're an enemy of God, but he desires us to reach them. And so they're an opportunity. So as you see yourself surrounded by people on a daily basis at your job or in your home or at your school and you say, man, all I see is lost people, that's a blessing in a way because that's opportunities. Those are all people that you can witness to. Those are all people that God can gloriously save and you never know what will, happen, what will become of that. And so just see it as a target-rich opportunity and target-rich environment. Um, if we have the proper focus, it will improve uh, proper ear focus. So eye focus is important, seeing things spiritually, but then the ear focus. Now, I'm not talking about listening and hearing audible voices from God and things. I'm, that's not, we're not getting into that. But does this sound familiar? Husbands, you're looking at your wife. Your eyes are trained on your wife. And you're listening to your wife. And then all of a sudden, she says, what do you think? And you realize that you were listening to your wife and you're still looking at your wife but there's some empty gap in there, and you don't know how long she was talking, but you weren't listening. Your ears started off focused there, but they kind of drifted somewhere else, maybe even to the recess of your own mind. And all of a sudden, you've got a decision to make. Do I reset? Or do I just repeat that? Either way, you lose. <laughs> So you're just already in trouble. You just got to come to terms with that. But, but isn't that so often the case? And as children, you know, our parents would get our attention and they would have our attention. We'd look right at them and they would speak to us and we'd see their mouth moving. And then we'd stop by halfway through and go, what? And as parents, isn't that infuriating sometimes? 
It's like, you didn't even finish the sentence. And they say, what? Like, because they weren't listening. They started listening. They heard their name. They perked up. And then it just something happened. And your words just kind of fell. They didn't make it. Sadly, I think that happens a lot in our walk with God if we're not careful. Because though we will see maybe with spiritual eyes, though we will focus on the word of God, we could start reading the Bible and we're, you know, we're just kind of listening spiritually for the word of God to speak to us, for God to speak to us through his word. And you get to the end of a chapter and I don't know about you, sometimes I, I just have to give up and go to bed if I'm too tired because I'll, I'll get to the end of a chapter and be like, wait, what, what did I even read? And I'll have to restart the whole chapter over and it'll sound like, I'll, I'll, it'll be like I never read it the first time because somehow my mind and my ears just tuned out. And so we have to be careful about that. As Christians, we want to make sure that we are seeing things through spiritual eyes, having the proper sight focus, but also listening to things, uh, listening to the Lord properly because it doesn't do us much good to see everything the way we ought to see it and then ignore when God does speak to us. When, God, when the Holy Spirit convicts us of something and we ignore it, when the Word of God speaks to us through a sermon or a Bible study or a Sunday school or our own devotions and we ignore it, uh, that's not proper ear focus. We need to keep our ears focused on the Lord. It's very easy to get our ears focused on other things because there's so many other things screaming into our ears all the time. If you, if you work in the secular field, you've got swear words all the time you're hearing, you've got horrible jokes you're hearing, you've got just, just foul things that you're hearing all the time and you can't help it you have to provide for your family you have to make an income so you have to be surrounded by that to some degree in most cases and so you got all that coming in and you're like man I, there's so much junk coming in it makes it hard to hear the right things it makes it hard to listen to the Lord and the leading of the Holy Spirit um, turn with me in your Bibles to 2nd Kings chapter 19 2nd Kings chapter 19 and verse number 10 with quite a situation here going on with the people of of Israel, and uh, we'll start picking up. We'll just pick right up in verse number 10. The Bible says, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered in the hand of the king of Assyria. So this is a spokesman for Assyria. He's coming and trying to scare all the, all the people of God. Verse 11, Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan and Haran and, Ze and Rezeph and the children of Eden which were in uh, Thelassar? Which, uh, where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arphad and the king of the city of Seraphim, uh, Seraphim of he uh, Hena and of Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. They are trying, the enemy is trying to speak words into their ears to discourage them from trusting God to discourage them from being bold and courageous in the fight. They're, they're, the enemy is trying to use their words and, and the reception of those words through the, the, the Israelites' ears to win the battle without ever fighting the battle. And, and so often that happens in our spiritual life as we listen to the wrong things and we get our ears focused in the wrong direction and we end up not doing what we ought to do before we ever even really need to be tempted. We're just hearing the wrong things and it's getting us off track. But here Hezekiah has the right response. He, he hears all this, he takes the letter, he lays it out before the Lord and verse 15 starts, he prayed unto God. You can't always help the junk that comes into your ears, but you can certainly pray to God at the end of the day and say, Lord, let me forget all that stuff and remember the verses I'm about to read. Open thou mine eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Lord, I, I heard eight hours of filth today on the job. Give me at least eight minutes of, of pure word of God that I can retain and remember instead of the filth I heard today. Just ask God to help because all that comes in. And, and I remember as a kid, you know, people, parents and things telling you, you, you all that junk in, it's going to be junk out. And I, I mean, that, there's truth to that. Even as a Christian, you may do all you can, but you hear all that junk all the time. You better balance that with some word of God and listen into good godly uh, music and songs and hymns and spiritual songs and preaching and teaching the word of God. You, you ought to make sure those ears get some good because they certainly aren't getting much good from the world. So proper focus on the Lord involves proper eye focus, proper ear focus. 
And then lastly, proper mind focus. All the listening and all the looking in the world does you no good if your heart and your mind aren't in the equation. Um, I've had times, I, I used to, the brief time that I went to Bible college before I had to come home and be the youth pastor uh, due to several reasons, um, I was driving every weekend. I would drive down from Gaylord, Michigan to Chelsea, Michigan. I would sleep in the nursery at the church, and then I would go up on Sunday night after church. Church get out about 7, 8 o'clock. You fellowship forever. And <laughs> About 11 o'clock at night, you start a three-and-a-half-hour drive straight north in Michigan in the wintertime. That's not a great thing. Um, my, my little my little two-door car was, you know, not the best snowmobile, and you hit certain areas of Michigan where just no matter what, if there's snow anywhere in the state, it's right there, and it's just always on the highway, right there between Ga Grayling and Gaylord, and that's about the time that I'd start pretty much falling asleep. So it's a bad combination, but I've had plenty of times like this when I've been drowsy or whatever it may be, or I've just been daydreaming, and you're driving, and maybe you're familiar with the route, but all of a sudden you're where you were intending to go and you're like, wait a second, I don't remember that last stop sign. I hope I stopped. Anybody ever had that happen to them? It's like, you just realize I've been, I know I've been through three red lights because I'm where I am now, but I don't remember them. So I really hope that I, really hope that they were green when I went through them because your mind just checks out. And it just goes somewhere else because you're doing something, maybe because it's monotonous, you do it all the time, whatever it may be, your brain checked out for a little while. And you just come back to it and you're like, well, I hope I didn't, you know, run anybody over in that time span. And, and that's, you know, driving's one example, but it, it, all throughout our lives. Sometimes it happens way more than we'd like it to. We just, wait a second, what day it is? What week is it? What year is it? And uh, we, we had, every, every year is the same. We go to do the prayer list. I print off prayer list tonight. And for about five weeks this year, we were still in 2023. Because I just kept forgetting to change that. Our brains check out a lot. And, and when it comes to keeping our mind on the Lord and keeping our eyes on the Lord and keeping our ears on the Lord and all that focus on the Lord, our minds certainly can wander. Some people struggle more than others with that. Um, I, I struggle a lot with, with a wandering mind. Uh, not that it's wandering necessarily to like bad things, it's just so much, you know, father of four, pastor, all these things going on. And just like with your life, you got a lot of things going on. And so your mind, it may not be wandering to, to bad, horrible, sinful things, but it's wandering all over the place because you got responsibilities, you got obligations, you got different things that are popping into your mind while the Lord's trying to speak to you. And, and it reminds me, you know, our kids are at this, we are, we are doing our best with it. They're, they're doing a lot better now, but they all go through that phase where, you know, mom and dad are talking to somebody and they just come up and mom, mom, mom. And it's like, hold on, wait a second. Mom, mom. And then, and then I notice, hold on, wait a second. Um, and we just, you know, th th there's that, there that distraction that's just constantly trying to pull your attention away. And, and I think all kids do that at some degree, and some of them get out of it fast, some of them get out of it slow, depending on how the parents handle it, but um, we won't get into that tonight. But it just reminds me of that in my mind, like my mind is just being pulled in so many directions so many times, and I've got to catch myself. I've told somebody before, and I, I believe this is true, pastors are the worst when it comes to sitting through a service. I don't... You might not want to do this because it might disappoint you, but next time you're, you have a, like a guest preacher or a bunch of guest preachers in, you could watch them. And most of the time, some preachers make a real hard, make a real hard point not to do this, but I've seen so many preachers, and I've been there myself, where because the way our minds work when a preacher's preaching, most of the time we're not just listening and receiving. We're listening and we're thinking, oh, that's a good point for this sermon. Oh, that's a good point for this. Oh, I could say this this way. And we're just like building 15 sermons in our mind while listening to one. And it's just, we're hardwired like that. So we got to try to focus to overcome that. But you'll see preachers all the time and the preaching is happening and they're writing. And they'll tell you, they're not writing the notes of what he's saying. They're writing their notes of what they're going to preach based on what he's saying. It's just how we're wired sometimes. Or they're checking their phones. And you're like, oh, the pastor's checking his phone. Yeah, because somebody might be passing away at their church. And so they're just, you know, you never know. And nowadays it's ridiculous. Like, I... I'm, I'm very frustrated because somehow my number got into the, the Republican database. And I'm not mad that it's a Republican database because certainly I wouldn't want it in the other database, but 
at least five times a day I get texts from Donald Trump Jr. who probably doesn't know my number. And from all these different things, and the problem with that isn't that they're annoying, it's that they'll go off during church. But as a pastor, knowing some of the situations going on in people's lives, I want to look to see if it's an emergency, and I look and I'm like, oh, it's, it's Trump. <laughs> and it's, just, it's frustrating. And, and so even in church sometimes, you know, we know we're supposed to be focused in, and, and so often, it's even for pastors, it's hard. It's hard because other things pop in, and they, don't, they may not be bad things. But it's popping in, and it's disrupting what the Lord's trying to give you through the service, whether it be through the fellowship or the song service or the specials or the preaching. Those interruptions in our mind, the wandering of our mind, it, even if it's good things, it can disrupt and it can mess up what the Holy Spirit's trying to do for us. And so it's hard, it's very hard sometimes to control our minds. Um, but if we'll do that, if we'll keep our minds focused on the Lord instead of on politics and job and everything else going on in our lives and, and just always dwelling on the wrong and the bad and the sinful and the evil and the, and, the, uh, and the fearful, if we'll keep our minds focused on the Lord, we might actually be able to claim Isaiah 26, 3, which says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. It's, it's sad when you see a Christian who has no peace in their life and they're just discouraged or depressed or worried all the time about all these things. And, and it's just, it's heartbreaking because you know the answer is just, you got to take your mind off all this and put it in here and, and take your eyes off all that and put them up there. And, and you just, you just got to do that. You, there's no other, you can get into what's your specific situation. Go, and you, you can go into all that, but the, the real simple answer is you need more of the Lord in your focus and less of all the other stuff. Now, sometimes the other stuff's important. I understand that. You got something going on at work, could it affect your career, your future. I understand that your mind's going to be occupied with that to a degree, but you better not let that override so much that your mind cannot be focused on the Lord when it ought to be. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that it exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Boy, wouldn't that be a full-time job? Man, the, way our, the things that pop into our minds sometimes, we'd be ashamed to, to reveal to people just some of the random things that pop into our minds. Because you think, well, why in the world would you think that? I don't know. <laughs> if I knew why I thought it, I would have done something to prevent it. But, but it just pops in there. I mean, many of you probably have, have a similar testimony of, uh, like for me, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm cursed with the, the remembering of, of lyrics of songs and things. And, and I didn't grow up just listening to hymns. And so to this day, you know, you can be walking through the grocery store and something will come on and you're just all of a sudden, you're, you're about toe tapping with it. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wait a second. I got I to gotta reel that back in. Or, or for some people, they lived a lot of their life in sin. And so a song comes on and immediately they're thinking about drinking. They're thinking about fornication. They're thinking about partying it up. And it's not that they want to do any of those things anymore, but it's just that, 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 sound, that song just brought their mind right back to that point. And you've got to capture that thought, bring it into captivity, and not let it go any further. There's a lot of things in our life, a lot of sins in our life that if we did just as soon as we had the thought, if we'd have brought it into captivity unto Christ, it would have ended it right there. You, you, don't, you don't step out on your wife with somebody from work until you've thought about it a whole lot. You, you don't wreck a church until you've thought about wrecking a church a whole lot. You don't, you don't do a lot of things that people do today until you've dwelt your mind on it a whole lot. And a lot of those things are things that we should immediately say, no, 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 that is not pleasing to God. That, that thought needs to go. Not always easy to do. But if we'll, if we'll get rid of those thoughts, one of the best ways to get rid of those thoughts is to fill our minds with other thoughts. You can only have so much stuff up here, right? My wife was truly disappointed in herself the other day for something that she didn't remember and it was just some crazy thing, like the name of somebody's kid that she went to school with back in high school. I'm like, have you seen them? No. 
I don't even remember most of the names of the people I went to high school with. I don't even, she asked me, <laughs> she, I shouldn't say this because it's being live streamed. Sorry, family members, if you hear this, but she, she tested me yesterday on, she said, what are all your nephew's names? I said, honey, <laughs> why? And I was like, well, here's one. And I gave her my, my sister's son. I was like, technically, that's my nephew. I said, all the other ones are my nephews in law. I don't think that's how it works. I claimed that. I, I think I named all but one of them. And, and he, and it was Dakota, so sorry, Crystal, her, her newborn. I said, he's new. She said, he's been alive seven months. I said, yeah, but I haven't had any conversations with him, so I don't remember his name. There's only so much room up here. And, and so if I forget somebody's name, trust me, it's not on purpose. There's only so much room. So when the junk comes in and you want to get it out, sometimes it's a blessing that there's only space for so much because you can just say, all right, well, if I don't want to think those thoughts, let me see what thoughts I should be thinking that will preoccupy my mind and keep me from drifting. Philippians 4, 8, you'll recognize the verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We just, we just got to control those thoughts and focus them in the right direction. Focus them on the Lord. Focus them on how should I live my Christian life. Focus them on husbands. How, sh how can I love my wife? Wives, how can I be submissive to my husband and support him? All these things, we, we know the truth from the Word of God. We just got to make sure we focus our minds on it. And I'd say every day, whether in your devotions or prayers, you ought to just take some time to just clear the junk out and say, Lord, let me just focus on you for a few minutes whether it's prayer time, study time, whatever it may be, just so we can get that focus corrected. And there's a reason for that. To go back with me to Hebrews chapter 12, and this will be our last stop. We want to give plenty of time for prayer at the end. Hebrews chapter number 12. We read verses 1 and 2. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll read them again. Wherefore, seeing we also are confessed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such con uh, contradiction sorry, of sinners against himself, lest ye be and faint in your minds. So the whole, the whole purpose of, you know, the, the reason we're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, is so we don't get weary and faint in our minds. You say, well, what does that look like? It looks like somebody who's so tired of, of the, the inner turmoil in their mind about what's going on at church or at home or at the job that they just get and they say, I, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'm not going to go to the word of God about it. I'm not going to pray about it. I'm just going to completely give up on it. And sometimes that is a very appealing looking option to just say, forget it. I've been praying for that person for that long. I, I, all they do is bring me heartache and sorrow. I'm not going to pray about them anymore. I'm just going to cut them out of my mind. That's, sometimes that's a very appealing option. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to faint in our minds and, and be weary in our minds. So I'll tell you what, you make more mistakes when you're tired. And, and it's the same thing with our mind. There's a, reason, there's a reason that if you show up to work and you're, you're falling asleep standing, the boss will probably send you home or fire you. <laughs> because depending on your job, you could cause some major damage by being sleep deprived because you're not thinking straight. You're not acting straight. You're not, everything's not quite right because you're sleep deprived. If we're weary in our minds, I mean, first of all, our minds, some of us, our minds aren't that sharp to begin with. <laughs> and then we get tired and our minds just, it just seems like we're overwhelmed with things and we just get weary about thinking about things and about praying about things. And, and that's a good moment for the devil to slip in some thoughts and for, for the enemy to do some damage because we're too tired to fight back. We don't want to get weary in our minds. The Bible talks about being weary in well-doing. 
We don't want to be so busy in our lives and so busy and with a focus in so many different areas that we're just so tired in our minds that we can't go to the Bible and get anything out of it at the end of the day because we're just too tired. We're tired of thinking. I've heard it said, uh, I've said before, I need a brain break. You know, I just turn it off for a little while. And I've heard people say that, you know, they'll, they'll go and they'll scroll social media for a brain break. I don't know that that's giving your brain a break. It's, it's probably just turning it to mush. <laughs> or they'll turn on the TV or do whatever. Some task that requires no thought. And it's because they're so tired in their mind. They're tired of thinking. And I get it. You know, we got to think about things throughout the day. But so often I think we focus on so much of the wrong stuff. And we, can, and we let, let it consume our minds when we should just focus on the Lord. And when something gets just overwhelming, just turn it over to God. Just like Hezekiah, when that, when that enemy came and said, oh, none of the other gods have protected their people. Who is your God? He just laid it before the Lord and prayed. So sometimes we just need to get our focus back the way it should be, with our eyes, with our ears, and with our minds. And that'll help us greatly in our walk with God. It'll help us greatly not to fail, not to fall, and not to open ourselves up to attacks from the devil, from the world, from our own flesh. So we want to focus on the Lord for that purpose, not just because it's the right thing to do, but it's beneficial for you and your walk with God to keep your focus on him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the time we've had in it tonight. Pray, please help us as we're going to be praying in just a moment. Lord, help us to do our best to keep our focus the way it should be throughout this week. Lord, help us to focus with spiritual eyes, seeing people as lost souls that need salvation. Lord, help us to focus our ears upon hearing your Holy Spirit and hearing your word. Lord, help us to focus our minds on things that are pure and things that are just and things that are true and holy, Lord, and to allow, not allow other things to creep into our minds, but to br bring them captive unto you. Lord, help us to do these things, not just because you command them of us, but because we know that they are what's best for us and for our walk with you. Lord, we love you. We thank you for giving us these instructions in your word. In Jesus, name we pray. Amen. All right. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Jacob.